This is America's Got Talent. What? This is not America. Uh, sorry, wrong show. This is Science in You from Cumberland County College with Professor William Olivero. Today's show, we're going to start out with a test. So get your paper and pencil ready. Here is the question. More than half of all known species are A, plants, B, insects, C, bacteria, or D, vertebrates. Well, you have for 10 minutes to come up with an answer. Ah, time is up. The answer is B, insects. And that is the topic for today. We're going to be talking about insects. Now, Steve, we were talking last week about your pet spider, and you thought it was an insect. Well, sorry, spiders are not insects. They have certain characteristics, and they are, these characteristics are definitely different than those of a spider. In front of me, I have a model of an insect. It happens to be an adult grasshopper. And if we look at the characteristics of this typical insect, we will see that it has three major body parts. It has a head, a thorax, and an abdominal area, typical of insects. Insects also have a pair of antenna, two pairs of wings, Usually, not always, lice do not have wings, but the grasshopper does, and most insects have two pairs of wings. Here is one, this part has been cut, so you see the outer wing, and you see the second wing for flying, one for protection, one for flying. They have two pairs of wings, typical for insects. Where else do we see in our model? Insects have nice compound eyes compared to your eye. You have a complex eye. You have an eye that has a lens that changes shape so that you can look at something coming towards you, like a truck, or you can look at the light being reflected off of your book as you read. So we have a, an eye that's definitely used for helping us build and seeing things up close and far away. That's a complex eye. This is the eye of an insect. If you go, uh, look over here a little bit more, we see this grasshopper has an ear. We have an ear too. We have a tympanum or tympanic membrane. Okay, so they have an ear too. So he's well aware of his environment. Whether he sees you really clear or not, he can smell you, he can taste you. The eyes, the antenna, the ears, and all the parts of the body pick up stimuli so he knows that you are around. At this end of the animal, the posterior end of this animal, and it is an animal, remember the animal kingdom, this grasshopper has a pair of ovipositors that only the females have. So this is a model of a female grasshopper. Insects also have a nice hard exoskeleton, skeleton on the outside of the body that protects it from environmental dangers. We have an endoskeleton. We are animals also, member of the insect group. We are a mammal. So here are some major characteristics, Steve, of an insect. Spiders are not insects. Scorpions are not insects. So here's your grasshopper. You might also be able to see, hard to show it, but here is a spiracle, an opening to the respiratory system. Okay? Um, and these are some of the major external parts. It's very hard to see the mouth parts of this animal. Okay? Mouth parts, they have two mandibles jaws so that this insect will chew its food. We have a mandible, goes up and down, 
bottom jaw. Well, this insect had mandibles that go sideways chewing the food. Other insects may have piercing sucking mouth parts, perhaps like a mosquito. This fella chewing mouth parts. If we look at the internal anatomy of, again, a typical insect, I'll turn him around. Remember, this is a female. And we can see that it does have a digestive system from the mouth area, where the mandible is located, through the crop, through the intestinal area, which is covered right here with eggs. Remember, this is a female grasshopper. Uh, eventually, we're going to get, right here, the crop all the way down to the intestinal area, all the way out to the anus, complete digestive system. It has a nervous system, perhaps we can see the brain, and a ventral nerve cord in white. Of course, we have a brain too, and we have a dorsal nerve cord, one that runs down your dorsal side of your body. He, like most invertebrates, have ventral nerve cords or lateral nerve cords. The female has eggs, and there's dozens of eggs, and we dissect a grasshopper at the college. Um, we will always see the eggs, and there are quite a few of them. He has a heart. Okay, many of the invertebrates have an open circulatory system with the blood flowing in the body cavities, while humans have a closed circulatory system where the blood is found in blood vessels, arteries, veins, capillaries, and of course through the chambers of the heart. So here we have a typical adult grasshopper, chewing mouth parts, two pairs of wings, first pair for flying, second pair, first pair for uh, protection, second pair for flying, typical insect. Let's take a look at an insect now. I know some people, when they saw episode one, saw those parasitic roundworms, and I know Dan got excited, and he, I think, uh, got scared of, at looking at them because those worms could be found in humans like the scarus worm and the pinworm. Well, now we have a nice individual that Dan might like because it's something that is kept as a pet. People keep this animal, this insect, as a pet. And this is your walking stick. This one with the antenna and the whole body is close to six inches long. You might be able to see if I turn this material, that it does have six legs, extremely long pair of antenna, but it does not have wings. This insect can live in trees, has chewing mouth parts, just like the grasshopper and crickets, and can eat the leaves of, uh, of a well, number of different type of trees, uh, lays its eggs actually on the ground, and people, actually a number of people in my class said they have kept these as pets. So it's a nice friendly guy, not going to harm anyone directly. The damage they do to trees seems to be quite uh, little, really. So here's your walking stick, a good type of individual to have, a pet, Dan, and you might like that one. Another one that I think we're going to have on the screen is your ladybug. Another nice, interesting insect. And of course, ladybug is not a bug. Better name would be ladybird beetle. It happens to be a beetle, not a bug. So what the heck is a bug? Well, to the average person, a bug is anything crawling up your neck. That's a bug. Or your boyfriend is a bug. I don't know. But in the science world, you have beetles, which belong to an order called Coleoptera, and you have bugs, common name for insects that belong to an order called Hemiptera. There's a difference between the bugs and the beetles. 
The lady buried beetle is a beetle. The one major difference would be if you look at a beetle, Japanese beetle, lady buried beetle, does it make any difference? The first pair of wings are very hard, different than the grasshopper. First pair of wings not used for flying. Second pair of wings membranous, used for flying in the ladybird beetle. The bug, on the other hand, if you look at the first pair of wings, you're going to see that about two-thirds of the wing is hard, hard like the beetle wing, but the last third of the first pair of wings is membranous, soft. So the bugs have one type of wing, beetles have another. The other major difference would be the mouth parts. Okay? The hemiptera or bugs have piercing sucking mouth parts. So therefore there are some bugs which are not very friendly to you. Assassin bugs. Well, on the other hand, there are some beetles which aren't too friendly to you either. I know I've seen Japanese beetles on my rose bushes, but the benefit of that ladybird beetle is that they like to eat aphids, the little yellow or orange insects on the side of your plant, and you may see there are hundreds of them. And what are you doing? They're destroying your plant. So the ladybird beetle is quite beneficial to you, while bugs not necessarily very friendly to mankind. Moving on to the next one, again hopefully we have a nice photograph to show you, an insect about an inch long called the velvet ant. Well, I had a course on campus years ago during the summertime, I think we called the grasshoppers and their friends. And about 12 young people in class, one girl and 12, 11, 12 boys. Well, the girl was not too excited about insects, but the boys were. And on campus, what did we see? These velvet ants. And they were running around campus, sort of a reddish, orange color. Nice, very friendly looking ant. Well, unfortunately, the velvet ant is not an ant. So you have to know what you're doing sometimes with nature. They happen to be a wasp. They happen to be the female wasp, and she has a powerful, powerful stinger. So the boys are very careful, even though they're fighting over trying to find one of these individuals, they still had to be careful they did not pick up a velvet ant. The males are black, dark colored, uh, individuals with wings, and usually you don't see them unless you are perhaps an entomologist. So you have to be careful of these velvet ants, even though they're quite attractive, they're fast moving, and uh, their young can get into uh, colonies of bumblebees and other type of colonies when the velvet ant is young. Moving on to another interesting insect, and that would be the louse. Again, not your boyfriend. I'm talking about an insect, the louse. No wings, they don't fly. And there are a number of different types. And if you're a teacher out there, you may be, you might have seen students with lice. You may be familiar with the lice. And I'm talking about the head louse, and I'm talking about there's a body louse. Let's stay with the body louse for a second. They're a little bit different in size, and the body louse basically lives on your clothing, come off your clothing, and bite you. And of course, we have one body louse that can spread bacteria to you and cause typhus. And if you watch any war movies on TV or Dr. Zhivago, he comes home from war into his house in Moscow where he lived with his family, and now the house is full of other people. The communists have taken over, and he comes in and he says, I believe there's typhus in Moscow. And the communist leader says, oh no, that's impossible. Well, anytime you have people living together in large groups, 
Civil War camps, Andersonville, places like that, people living together. Hygiene, again, is not proper. People are not washing. And if you have one louse, you may have hundreds of lice on your body biting you and spreading this typhus that includes extreme headache, a rash, high fever, and is a very, very dangerous ailment. Your head louse, again, many teachers looking down at their children in class will find these nits, another name for head louse. You can see them. And again, I guess the idea is tending the child to the nurse and from the nurse the child goes home. And may, for a while the child may look nice and clean, no more nits, no more lice. And yet a week or so later, two weeks later, he has the problem again. Because if one person in the house has these lice, probably the whole group of people in the house could have them also so you can get them back on your body again. And I guess that's where the term nitpicking comes from. Don't be a nitpicker because people pick those nits off or comb those nits off of people's head. So Lysa, we talked about a couple friendly. Here he is, good old walking stick, nice friendly pet, but you don't want to have a pet louse. I don't think so. Well, it's two legs or six legs. You don't want a pet louse. No, no. And I think one last individual that we want to bring up because you've seen them. You've seen them in restaurants. You've seen them in your house. You've seen them in your apartment building. We're talking about cockroaches. And the one that I'd like to mention, actually, actually I did some research on them years ago, was the Blatella germanica which is the German cockroach. About a half an inch long, light brown color with a couple dark lines on its dorsal side. Reproducing, producing maybe 30 young at one time. And the danger, of course, is having one of these cockroaches in your building, in the basement, or maybe even a store, eating food in the store and that cockroach, that the female, carries an egg mass called an oodica, which may contain 30, 35 eggs that can hatch. And if you have one in the store, leaving the oodica, and she lays that mass of eggs when she's mature, Right before they're ready to hatch, she'll lay that oodica, perhaps in a bag, in a shopping bag. And here you're shopping, the fellow in the store puts the canned goods or whatever in the bag, where it's a paper bag or plastic bag, and there is the oodica. You bring it at home, you put that bag maybe behind the refrigerator, you go on vacation, and what happens to those eggs? They will hatch. And you're going to get 30, 35 nymphs. Okay, a nymph does not look like a caterpillar. Caterpillars are found in one type of life cycle. But a nymph is a small individual that looks like the adult. So you have nymphs, nymphs and YMPH that look like the adult grasshoppers, and here we have nymphs that look like these German cockroaches. And probably they can eat anything you want. I've seen the German cockroach behind wallpaper, probably eating the glue. I've seen them in large numbers in a house with the lights are on, daytime. So you know you have lots of cockroaches you've seen running around in the daytime. Probably eating just about anything. And one thing I've done is probably nasty of me, I admit it, I'll have to go to confession perhaps, is going to someone's house, and especially in the silverware, a silverware drawer, picking out the knives, looking down at the bottom of the, the drawer, and what did I see? Lots of little black dots. And what were those little black dots? They happened to be the waste products of the German cockroach. 
So quite obvious when the lady said, would you like to have something for lunch, Bill? I said, oh, no, 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 I'm full. Look how fat I'm getting. I don't want to have any food in your house. You look so poor. You got to be careful of cows. They spread rapidly from building to building. But if your house is not attached to other houses, I believe you can get rid of them because I've seen this done. You can get rid of cockroaches if you want to. And I remember a couple of years ago eating in Vineland, like I mentioned the restaurant because it's no longer there, with my daughter Tina. She had one right on her salad, believe it or not. Live cockroach right on the lettuce. And of course she got excited, which meant her brave, strong father, that's me, had to get excited. And well, it was a, <laughs> that lunch was a disaster. So here's our story about insects. They're found all over the place. They're found in leaves. They're found on leaves. They're in flowers. They could be in you. They could be on you. They can be a, a pest. We've tried to get insects that are eliminated, but unfortunately, they're still out there. They fly, they crawl, they jump. You might have seen the maggots down in the bottom of a garbage can in the summertime. They emptied the garbage and what's crawling down there in the bottom of the garbage can? The lava of flies, perhaps. So it's hard to get away from them. As a matter of fact, there's a bunch of them right around here right now, which I have to do something about. And there's one now. Got the son of a gun. And another one. I don't know what's going on here. And this is Science and You with Professor William Olivero at Cumberland County College.